In this Make It Once video, I don't boil the brakes. So sorry about all the noise. It's really hot today and uh, the neighbor's AC is running all day long. Um, I figured I'd take advantage of the heat and do some rust removal. I'll talk about that in a moment. But a quick update on the rear calipers. Um, I did a little bit of research after I got the second piston out with some with some struggle and I actually tracked it down They're typical to Jaguar. So I looked up the Jaguar part number and I was able to find some um, new old stock I found two sets the last ones anywhere online. I could find that were available uh, and so Those are gonna work and I think what it what that hole in the center is is that it's a return, like a pressurized return. So it turns out when you read the service manual, you can actually figure out what some of these little odds and ends, these mysteries are. So in the rear brake caliper, that little pin that was inside the caliper and the hole that goes inside the piston is part of a system called ASB, the anti-shake back device. Um, I wasn't too far off in my guess. Uh, it's not to return the piston to the correct position after applying the brakes. Uh, the brake line pressure does that. What it's supposed to be is to keep the piston the correct distance from the rotor as the rear axle shakes back and forth as you're traveling across uh, rough ground or around bends. So I guess they're assuming you can drive your Volvo on pretty terrible roads or gravel. And so as that rear axle shakes, uh, the little pin, spring, and washer system, the ASB is supposed to keep the piston the correct distance from the rotor so that the brakes can also always be applied. Uh, and probably the reason why I couldn't find these pistons, um, except that I got lucky, was that they probably, everybody just replaced them with regular brake calipers since this probably isn't a big deal most of the time. Uh, I would assume that the brakes would work fine, even on terribly rough roads. So there you go. Uh, they're a little bit difficult to get in and out, so I'm not going to jam that in there until I'm ready to assemble. But they are, uh, they look pretty good. One of the set of four does have a little bit of rust in it, so I'm going to de-rust that. Um, I don't, it's still very smooth. I think maybe it's just from sitting in the box or something, some moisture. So, how I'm going to do that is understanding rust. So what rust the process of rust is oxidation. So o oxygen combines with the iron in the steel and it's an exo exothermic reaction which means that it heats up and releases energy. So in order to get the rust off uh, without mechanical grinding and stuff, I'm going to use evapor rust in, over here which is chelates the iron which removes the oxygen but it works a lot better if you're providing energy in, right? So this reaction to remove the oxygen is endothermic, requires uh, energy in, in the form of heat. So we're gonna put evapor rust in my old pressure pot. I'm not gonna pressurize it, just what I have. It's aluminum, because I don't want it to react. The evapor rust only works on iron, so any rubber parts or brass or anything that's left on it, it's not gonna be affected. Cleaned it up pretty well, so should be able to get in there clean up all the rust to warm it up. 140 degrees is what I have read is perfect for 30 minutes. We'll get rid of all the rust. The only concern is that the evapor rust is going to get inside all the channels within inside each of the calipers. It won't cause any more rust. It won't harm it, the, the inner rubber o-ring in here. And then once I flush the brake fluid, it'll get it all out. So I think de-rusting the inside probably will help. I just have to make sure I do a couple extra flushes and we'll be good to go, get rid of all this surface rust, and then it'll get rid of that internal surface rust in here. We'll come back, smooth it out with really fine sandpaper, um, get some grease on it, get the pistons back in. I think these will be totally refurbished. So let me set all that stuff up and get to de-rusting these. So I definitely don't want to cook anything. I don't want a chance of boiling or anything like that or getting too hot. So I'm just going to keep it on low. It may not get hot enough right away, so I might leave it in a little bit longer. Um, but I do think this process should work. And I'm going to add in this one piston that has a little bit of, tiny bit of surface rust right here. 
again I don't think it was used I don't think it's an issue I just don't want it to um, rust further and pit if any moisture gets into the system so I won't take the chance to just get get rid of it I think it may have looked at one gallon just about covers it all up. Yeah, so that's covered all the surfaces that I need to rest it. So I think I'm going to just kind of cover this up loosely. Okay, so the bottom is already at 95. So it's been actually about an extra hour, so it's five o'clock now. Um, it took a lot longer to warm up than I thought it would. It's finally up to about 125 degrees. And if you can see down in there, um, the fluid has turned black. Uh, the metal finally is like clear, clearing up. Um, I think a lot of that crud is actually the leftover brake fluid from inside. So I kind of made a little miss up calculation. Hopefully it's not messing with it too much. Um, so I'm gonna turn this off, get some gloves on, Pull it out and take a look real quick and then let it cool down a little bit more and then take them out and wipe everything off. All right, so I got my gloves on and I'm ready to take it out. If you actually read the instructions, it says that it has some detergents and things like that so to take off grease so it can actually uh, work on the metal. So it's part of what happens is if there's anything left on it, the detergent, the soap, scrubs the metal. And then the second part is you're supposed to wipe it off right away. Um, and it doesn't say that it'll it won't like allow it to rust again, but what it does is that it leaves um, a, Kind of a film on the surface and So it does say To dry up get all the evapor rust off I don't know if you can see there, but there definitely is no rust anymore, but there's a lot of fluid down in all these little cracks and crevices Now there before I forget. Take a look at that one. Yeah, all the rust is gone. It looks perfect. Um, so as far as getting rid of the rust, this seems to have worked pretty well. Whether I have any issues with the vapor rust making the braking fluid have an issue later on. I'm not totally sure, but again, I think just uh, bleeding the brakes multiple times should be if enough to get this working again, so. Uh, 